Today, I titled this message, Staying Faithful in Later Years. Yeah. Uh, I went over this message a couple of times and it rests heavy upon me. Because if we look around, we'll see that there are men who have been in position, and I wouldn't necessarily only say ministry, but men who have been in position for years, mm-hmm. some started out faithful. Some of them is your favorite politicians. Some of them is your favorite celebrities. Some of them is your favorite pastor. Mm-hmm. Well, they have started out faithful, doing good. And in latter years, everything keep tumbling down. For you and I this evening, I want to encourage us. Many of us had an excitement when we came to know Christ. Some of us wouldn't say it, but some of us has lost that excitement. That enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to be there. Amen. Church don't know. I want to hear from God. Prior meeting going on. I want to be there. Some of us has lost it. Yeah. And I'm saying this evening, I'm not here to knock anyone. Because we're all in this together. Amen. Amen. I'm just here to encourage us. That as we go on, that we'll persevere with that strength, that tenacity, that desire to continue in the things of God. To continue to do the work of God. Because there's work to be done. There's work to be done, and this evening I want to encourage everyone. We are called to walk steadfastly. And we may start out walking steadfastly in the faith. And sometimes when you look at life, we think that it's only temptation that comes and just knock us off our feet. But if we at times look at even what we consider as blessing in this 21st century, we have to be a big fat bank account. Ten cars, Lamborghini and Fossi. I can tell you this this evening, that that also can be our biggest distraction as a people. Solomon in his time was one of the richest men ever. From what the Bible states, Solomon was so rich, the price of silver chain. That's how rich he was. Started of faithful. The word of God tells us that Solomon loved the Lord. Yes, yes. Starting off. Oh, glory to God this evening. And at the end, the point said, listen, there the world conclusion. He gives a summary from his experience to let you know, listen, this is it. <laughs> Ain't nothing complicated about it. This is it. Glory to God. Let us turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3. Are we only going to read verse 3? We can't start at verse 1. We stop at verse 4. It says, And Solomon 
made affinity with King Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until his own house, until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord on the wall of Jerusalem round about it. So we see where the man started major work on the behalf of God. He made a house for the Lord. He built walls around the city of Jerusalem. Verse 2 went on to say, Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the status of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. And the king went to Gideon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offering did Solomon offer upon that other child. So we see here with the word of God telling us that Solomon loved the Lord. Yes. It states, walking in the status of David, a man who the word of God says was after God's own heart. This was how Solomon started out. And this is why I'm saying this evening, it's just a warning to us to be careful, to be mindful of our walk as believers in Jesus Christ. Starting out faithful, have this desire to run for Christ, telling everybody who you know, oh God, come now, come now, come now. And you're looking at everybody, why they're not believing? And you're calling everybody, why they're not coming? Are we still calling today? Are we still looking for those to come into the body today? Solomon started out, and the word of God tells us that he loved the Lord. Glory to God. We go down further to 1 Kings chapter 11. Let's go to 11. 1 Kings chapter 11. We're skipping just to save time. Glory to God. <clears throat> Solomon <clears throat> was one of the wisest king. Amen. One of the, and this is what I'm saying this evening. Take heed. Mm -hmm. Take heed. Solomon was one of the wisest king. He was a short of wisdom. He asked God for wisdom, and God blessed him beyond wisdom. Yes. Bless him with wisdom and more. Yes. He didn't need God help us this evening. Mm -hmm. I'm saying he didn't need anything. Mm -hmm. He wasn't in need. Mm -hmm. God blessed him. Glory to God. We start at verse 1, 11 verse 1. But Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, woman of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon claimed unto these in love. Now hear me clearly. God himself spoke to Solomon. 
God spoke to Solomon. He said, don't do this. Don't try to get into any love affair right there. Is that still happening today? Oh, God help us. Our emotions and feelings are still leading us in a way that is contrary to the word of God. Oh, God. People still telling you today. I remember as a kid and a little young man growing up, talk about butterfly in the store. Love so much. But in this 2024, people still talking about butterfly in the stomach and finding themselves of the will of God. All because of a desire for the flesh. But I'm saying this evening, take this as a warning where Solomon is concerned. God spoke to him and said, do not and a love affair on that side. Do not get in town with any physical romance and you know the fullness of it. But Solomon didn't. God help us to see. Help us to see. Help us to see. In latter years, this is what I'm saying. And I wouldn't necessarily say lots of years mean age, you know, because sometimes when you say that, people think you're talking about <laughs> specifically age. Yeah. I'm not talking about specifically age, but you've been in the body of Christ. Yeah. You're going 10, 15 years, and you run out strong, but here you are, you know. Everything slowed down because your emotions leading you. Oh, she looking good, Lord. Lord, help me. Oh, he looking handsome, Lord. I'm saying this evening, take heed to the word of God. Let's continue in the righteousness of God. Oh, glory to God. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his eyes. No, no, I want you to know this evening that it's not only wives will turn away hearts. Amen. Money can turn away hearts. Amen. True. When we look at as blessing today, and this is why I say, be careful of what people telling you the blessing is. Yes, yes, yes. Because look at Solomon with all that he had. When it went down to the conclusion for him to tell you of the whole matter. Did you hear anything about money? Wives, concubines, houses, chariots, silver, gold, none of that you heard. It was right back to where he started. Trust God. Right back to where he started. Amen. Nothing was told of all the houses and concubines and wives and servants and chariots and horses. Nothing was mentioned. So I want us to pay close attention this evening. Amen. Pay close attention this evening. Amen. I started out as a champion for God. Now we're losing races big time. And it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart of the other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father so we see here where the word of God make mention of David again as in the beginning the word also make mention because it was told that so Solomon, in a manner now, like his father David did. Oh, glory to God. 
No, the same word of God is telling you where the man is at this moment. His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. God help us this evening. God help us this evening. His heart was turned away. Not just to one God, but to other gods. You talk about confusion. But to other gods. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Simeons, and after Malcolm, the abomination of the Ammonites. So all these people have their gods. And now Solomon desire running behind, following all their gods. And this is why we as a people have to be careful where we go, what we participate in, because some of us acting blind at times, finding ourselves in some places that we're not supposed to be. You have an idea, come on now. Why should I go here? People invite me places and I'm asking questions, okay, what is this about? No, I'm not coming. I say, I'm not coming. Once you tell me the specific and what it's about, I'm not coming. I can tell you straight up, right there. I don't have to duck you or hide you. I'm not coming, brother. I'm not coming. You and I have an idea at times. But still, and we do it. Some of us want to test, test. Let me see. Don't entertain. Don't go. Don't want to be a part of it. Amen. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. Glory to God. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. And went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Oh, God help us to see evening. So, so, he had an example. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He had an example. It's not like he didn't. When the man gets in eggs, the man bring him and says, son, sit here. Let me have a conversation with you. Oh, God help. Not many fathers did do that with their son. Even this time, not many fathers get at a certain age and draw the son, come, hold a chair, let me have a conversation with you about life. Let me have a conversation with you about the things of life, which is important. Yes. Solomon had that. David, his father, did that to him. He had a conversation with him. Glory to God. Then did Solomon build a high place for Shemosh, the abomination of Moham. So he started out building, oh God, a house unto the Lord. Now he's building houses unto other gods. Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Building altars and houses to other gods. In the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abom abomination of the children of Ammon, and likewise did he for all the strange wives which burned incense and sacrifice unto their God, unto all what strange wives? Okay, wives, Mister. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help us today. I'm saying to you and I today, take this as a lesson. 
Because when I see, look over this message, it have me looking at my life. Get yourself together. Amen. Don't pay no fool in your latter years. Get yourself together. You look in the New Testament because I was researching and I'm looking at elders in the church. And everywhere you see a priest, there was an elder there. Everywhere you see an apostle, there was an elder there. Timothy and Paul even instruct the elder woman, the elder man, to do what? Teach the younger ones. Yes, amen. 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 Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Teach the younger ones. Amen. God help us today. Amen. Help us today, Lord. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel which had appeared unto him twice. God help us. God appeared unto Solomon twice to instruct him on what to do. To let him know, don't partake over this side with them wives and don't get entangled with them. But in all that, he was still led astray. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Still led astray yeah. by a desire for women. Mm. By a desire of the flesh. God help us today. Some of us will never talk about the struggle again. I understand it. Fine. But my hope is that you can bring God to God in honesty. Because how they can change it for you now. The counselor man that can be able to change it for you now. But I know a God. Yeah. Who is faithful in all his ways. Yeah. And if Solomon could come right back around. To tell you the conclusion of the whole matter. God is able to do the same thing for you yes. if you're in that struggle. Amen. Amen. Yes, you hear me say before, it was a point in my life. God bless my wife right here. She put up with a lot of mess. I can't tell you that now. But God bless her heart. There was a time in my life where the struggle was real concerning certain things. And I couldn't change it. You have heard me say many times. Mm -hmm. Is when everything is over and done. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Find the strength. I'd never do that again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give me a couple of weeks by myself. Become a fool all over again. Oh, yeah. So you think I don't understand what Solomon went through? Mm -hmm. huh? oh, yeah. I know he had all them concubines and all them wives. He made me feel like the kings of all kings this evening. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Worse in the culture where I'm from, it's like a stripe on the snow. Mm -hmm. Like your major general in them. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I'm from a culture where people sing songs and it go viral. Man, you have love, girl, and girl, you have a look. That's the culture I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. That was a part of me. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I knew growing up. I couldn't help myself. It took God. Yes. Hallelujah. For me to more than once see where I was wrong, understand where I was wrong, because before it was good. Hallelujah. We're gonna lie to you right here. Before I knew God, all that was good. You could never tell me something wrong with you. Google. I said, before I came to know Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior, yeah. if you had tell me then that something was wrong with me, something wrong with you. Yeah. Because yeah. that was all right. Yeah. Yeah. It took yeah. God to open my eyes yeah. to understand where I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Where I could go to God in prayer. Yeah. Now God forgive me for all. Thank you. The scars. Yeah. 
You see your physical start, but you say for all the scars yeah, because yeah. I knew. Mm -hmm. Mighty. Yes. So I'm saying this evening, we in the body, yes. coming on on this journey. It's a journey now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if it wasn't a journey, mm -hmm. Paul would never stand to say, I've finished the race. Yes. Oh, God, help us this yes. evening. Yes. Are you following? Yes. 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 We are on a journey. Yes. And on this journey, mm -hmm. let me start out vibrant and Hallelujah. have this urge and this desire for the things of God. Running on our workplace and our job places to tell someone about God. Mm -hmm. Running in the street to minister to people. Tell them about this God that we have come to know. This God who have delivered us. This God who have taken us out of darkness into his marvelous light. This God who I can call upon anytime. Anywhere am I? Yes. Yes. Yes, and I'm saying this evening, are you still running for him? I'm saying this evening, do you still have that desire for him? I'm saying this evening, are you still running and knocking? Have you ever watched some of these people who run for politicians? Knocking doors. Let me say something to you. Many of these people knock on doors and people close doors in the face. Many of these people knock on doors and people threaten them. Many of these people knock on doors and people tell them, do not come back here. You think that deter them? Jesus. Wake me up, Lord. Wake me up, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I have to throw some cold water on me this evening. Yeah. Wake me up, my yeah. yeah. You think that deterred them? No. They're still running for the favorite politician. Yeah. Knocking on doors of people to tell them he will be the winner. Yeah. He will be the good president. Well, watch me now. Uh -huh. Look at us now. Uh -huh. Comfortable. Uh -huh. Blessed by God. My God is faithful. Jesus. And I'm comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Forget about it. I'm him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is some of us way of thinking of. You know what? I'm saying. I mean, I'm tired. Enough of them. They're not coming. I'm saying this evening. Continue the run. Yeah. Don't be discouraged. Continue the run. Look at those out there who is talking against God. Mm -hmm. Look at those who are saying there's no God. Mm -hmm. You think anything deter them? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I look at how easily we deter. On this street, the people threaten them, people tell them, get off, we don't want to hear from you. But you think that deter them? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it's a lot that they speak. Amen. So I'm saying on this journey this evening, continue the run. Don't give up. Don't get weary. No. Continue the run. If you want to rest, rest, man. There's nothing yeah. wrong with resting. Because in resting, then you come back more strength. Then you come back yes. more ability yes. to Amen. know. You do your search and you come back Amen. running for God again. Amen. 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 When Jesus met the woman of the well. She had a desire. Because after being converted, after she understood that, hey, you can't get live in the water here. You see, when she came to the realization, you think anything could have stopped her? Let me tell you this. There must have been opposition where she came from. She must have known that there must have been people there who didn't want just like this age and time we're in now. Didn't want to hear nothing about God. But she ran to tell the whole village, come see a man. Tell me everything about me, which I did. Don't even lie to tell my neighbor what this man could tell me. Some things I never gonna hide. And this man knew everything. Come see a man. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up this evening. All Solomon asked about from God he requested was wisdom. Yes. And God blessed him up.
Phone down. Yeah. Yes. Your blessing is coming. Amen. Do not let your blessing overshadow who God is in your life. Do not let your blessing overshadow who God is in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you. You ever think that if Solomon couldn't afford to do what he did, would it happen? Mm -mm. If he could never afford to have 600 wives, 300 concubines, would that have happened? I'm saying to you this evening, don't let your blessing overshadow who God is in your life. If Solomon was a broke man today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which wife looking at? Tell my Sit yourself one side. <laughs> I need that some eh? Right? <laughs> like nothing. And you want 600 of us? Like, really? <laughs> so I'm saying the same thing. It's no joke. When God bless you, don't let that overshadow who God is in your life. Amen. 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 He's faithful. Yeah, Lord. Loving, forgiving. Yeah, he is. Oh, Long suffering. Yes. Wherefore, verse 11, the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of me, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my status, which I have commanded thee. I will surely rain the kingdom from thee. Give it to the will Give it to who? Promotion will come from the east or from the west. So when promotion comes, be aware, be mindful of where promotion comes. Yes, yes, yes. It's not by luck or by chance. Comes from God. Yeah. And we see God tell Solomon, Listen, I'll take it from you and give it to your servant. Yeah. Behave yourself. Come on. Get it together. Come on. Mm. Glory to God. 